exhibit a European Union that happens every year in New Zealand. The point of the show is to show you a gift that I purchased in the course of a year. And rather than just be a show about recent acquisitions, it's the breadth of the kind of acquisitions that we have, the kind of report card on how we're doing. You, as the viewer, give me feedback. I love the glass.
we actually have some pieces that harken back to pop art, Warhol, all those folks, and merges pop art memories with language art, where words, books, letters get used as the subject matter of the art. You sometimes don't know what those letters mean. In this case, the CO though is Carl Ostendorf. So Carl Ostendorf. Plot. We all get that. Cut. This is a different artist, different play on words. The word out with a square cut in the O so that it cut out. So all these pieces in Jerry's collection are really terrific artists. They're smaller pieces, but they give us a good taste of, of Terry's taste and of very important artists in the last 10 years, all of these people. Uh, this, as I say, is a portion of the collection. More is coming still, along with, and we won't get to see this for another year, a fantastic Japanese toy collection that's coming our way from Terry Myers. Let's take a walk in the other room. In this room, we start out with two pieces by Heather Day, Penny and a print. And Heather Day, most folks will remember, last year had an amazing exhibition in Gallery 4 with us, a gigantic mural that stayed for most of the year. Actually, that was this year. Ah. <laughs> It felt like longer. It felt like longer, but it was this year, right? And we purchased all these pieces from that. One more second, Charles. They're still saying it's hard to hear you. Could you maybe move your mic upwards towards your voice? Or Let's get this a little better. <laughs> hard to hear? Sometimes the mic doesn't work as well as we would like. Let's try the next piece. Let's, let's see if we can walk over this way. Okay. Another show that we had recently was Julia Stanzak, and this print was a gift from the Santa Foundation as a thank you for doing the show. It was a marvelous show, and a show that because of its concentration on color saturation and optical illusions, practically made the room buzz. In fact, some people said as they walked through the exhibit that they had to pause to rest their eyes between paintings because they were so optically challenging. And, in fact, Julian was the father of Bob Park. So, in a sense, that you have that kind of reaction underscores how important his work is. Right here, I don't know what I because it, it was a lost work for a long time. Carlos Merida was best friends with Picasso and the other Cubans. He was from Guatemala, set up a studio in Mexico, and traveled the world, which is where he met all the other Cubists. He had his own take on Cubism, and you can see that it's not the same as Juan Gris or Picasso, but it was very popular for a while. But it's interesting because his career took off, but not to the same degree as the other Cubists. He's thought of as, as the best modern artist in Mexico, uh, beloved there, but the career of Picasso and the other Cubists eclipsed his, and it's always been a mystery to me as to why one artist all of a sudden goes skyrocketing high and another art artist stays more toward the middle ground. There's no good explanation for these things, except for the market perhaps. But I also love to chase work like this because by us chasing it, discovering his story, and bringing it to the public, then we keep his history alive, uh, even if we couldn't have any effect 
years ago on his career. Turning now to sculpture, I've got two pieces that I want you to see. One is by Mark Pine, and Mark is an extraordinary glass artist who casts his glass, and he casts in such a way that he's putting different angles in each side and the top. So these geometric on the outside and geometric on the inside seems to have different facets for every angle. We might be looking at a, a large diamond or something. So cut glass, cast glass, excuse me, then round. When this came out of the cast, it would be rough and he would cut and grind until he gets this beautiful surface. So here you have one kind of cast glass. Now let's go over here and look at Marlene Rose. This too is cast glass. So you say, Charles, if this is cast, if this is cast, why does this look this way? Well, they're casting in different kinds of molds. Marlene uses the ancient sand mold method, and that's what gives it the rough texture. In fact, actually some sand has still stuck to the piece as she's done. And the smooth side is the back side, where she signs the piece. And frequently people are just amazed that both processes would technically be the same, casting on the glass, but come up with such different effects. Marlena is also interesting in the sense that she travels the world, and her objective is to see things from ancient cultures which she then brings to contemporary life. So this, this force form uh, has a, a feel to me of an Etruscan bronze or something like that. And she feels that it ties these centuries together and these cultures and these lives together. If we can move right over here, a couple of pieces that I want to comment on. George Lawrence Nelson's Little Pastoral Sea. Now, Nelson is another one of these artists that I love because they were classically trained, they had good careers, they were in all the right artist societies and sometimes founders of artist societies. And, and yet, as tastes and art change, a piece like this becomes, you know, kind of too beautiful, uh, not tackling any big issue, uh, not threatening any big emotion. It's just lovely. Well, and there's a certain point, as modern art came along, that just lovely wasn't quite good enough. So, George Lawrence Nelson, while he had one of the best careers in the country, becomes a very obscure artist. You know, I, I track people like him, and using history books, I track them with the various different data trackers that auction houses make available. And when you find one, you have to go for it. And interestingly enough, People in that category, not only is it important to have one in our collection because they show the backbone of American art, but also you often can pick them up at a good savings because they still might not be popular, although I think that's quite a good see. Different category altogether. Here we have Katja Oxman, and Katja's work is predominantly made up of still lives. And Katya and I have been friends for years, since the 80s, and when we started doing artist archives, I reached out to her because she's in so many museum collections, but there's no body of her work in any one place. And so Katya and I worked together to pick a selection of her works, over a hundred, that represent everything she's trying to accomplish. And as I say, most still lies, and the reason for that being that she, at one point, worked outdoors on landscape, but when she began having children, in fact, she found herself indoors all the time. So she looks through the window and shares the landscape, but she arranges the things in her life in front of her so that she can continue to work and proceed as an artist, even though she has a limitation of being a mother, too. 
and this is, this is one of her uh, newer works. Kai is so sweet that every time she does a new work, she sends us one for her archive. That is wonderful. Gasset, Maine. And both these artists had great careers, were teachers, had been classically trained, and yet most people don't know their names. I'll tell you too, the little lane struck me when I was at the auction because my father years ago lived on Little Lane in Wisconsin, Maine. It did not look like this in his father. Folks might remember that we had a beautiful claim show. Most artists who 
become a working class, come to it as a result of their training and their as a result of their training and usually that's going to happen in college, grad school. But we want to get was actually born to a class making family, not part of class. He had become an art class person. But he started blowing class with his family at 12 years of age. Lino is just under 90 years old today, and he's considered the finest class player in the world. So to find a piece like this was a real treat. Uh, I found it at a auction, and I think given the photograph, it, which wasn't good, I think no one was bidding on this piece because they didn't understand what it really was or how it really looked. I went back and looked up the series, the standard series, in, in a wonderful book that had a better photograph, and I knew I had to bid on this piece. We were so lucky to get it. And let's go down to this next piece because this is a slice of the history of studio glass. In that, we had pieces by Harvey Littleton and Nick Levino that we acquired from Ron Bird, whose father, Clyde Bird, taught ceramics at the Fort Wayne Art School and Museum, which was us back in the day. And this was a point in the early 60s when some of the pieces almost look functional. Some are beginning to just be art with no possibility of, of thinking about it as a functional piece. And it's glass finding its way. It's glass before glass was big. And it's glass by the founding people of the glass movement. So it's a treat for us to have been able to acquire these. And I've just gotten a gift of one more piece uh, by Mr. Levino that's coming next week. I'll be so excited to put that in the case alongside these. Our long wall features something quite unusual. It's Liz Quizgard's work again, but it's Liz working in fabric, making wall pieces that she sketches out a pattern of how they need to be put on the wall, and you have to refer to that and pin these up, and they're, they're just delightful. So, so Liz is a painter, a printmaker, a fabric artist, and a sculptor from time to time. So she's had a great career. She's in her 90s now, and I'm delighted to have her in our collection. And she's delighted as well. Well, I thank you for being with us today. I hope you could hear some of what I had to say, and I hope you come back to hear another tour in this format. And I urge you to go to our website where you can visit recordings of these things and find out when other virtual things are happening. So thank you.